we have one last representation of a set to go through. And it's probably the most important. This is a very efficient way to represent sets when we know that we can compare the elements and put them in some sorted order. And that's to use binary search trees. So a tree set stores the elements of a set in the tree class from lecture. Remember that? Let's take a look. The tree class is a binary tree, meaning it has at most two branches with their internal entries. So to construct a tree, we pass in the entry at the root of the tree and then the left and right branch, which may be none, meaning there is no branch. We just store those three elements. We have a way to print this thing out. And so how do I create trees? Well, I could create a tree just like that, or I could create a tree with branches where two is at the root, one is the root of the left branch, and three is the root of the right branch. Proposal number three, a set is represented as a tree, where each entry, meaning the entry at the root of the tree, is larger than all the elements in the left branch and smaller than all the elements in the right branch. Now, of course, yet again, yet again, we will disallow repeats, meaning that the entry at the root has to be either larger or smaller than all the elements. It cannot be the same. Okay, so we put all the small stuff in the left, the big stuff in the right, and the entry is right in the middle. Here's an example. So seven is bigger than one, three, and five, and it's smaller than nine and 11. And this is true recursively. So if we look at this tree within a tree, three is bigger than everything in its left branch and smaller than everything in its right branch, and so is nine. Here's the same set represented by a different tree. So here we have the same property that for any subtree in the tree, if we look at the root, that entry is going to be bigger than everything in the left and smaller than everything in the right. True here, true here, true here. Here's another one. Same set of numbers, different tree representation. So we're not forcing ourselves to choose among one of these. They're all fine, but they all have the same condition. Now, let's say we've represented a set in this way. How do we figure out whether an element is in the set or not? We traverse the tree. Now, we're looking for a particular element when we do membership testing. This is the set contains function. So we have the set, which is represented as a tree now. We have some value V and we compare it with the entry at the root. If it's the same, then we found the element. But if it's not, then the element is either in the left or the right subbranch if it's there at all. And by focusing on one branch, we reduce the set by about half. So here's the idea. We have some set that's a tree. We have some value we're looking for. If S is none, that means we've reached an empty branch. And so this set must not contain V. Otherwise, if we find that the entry of this set is in fact V, then we found that the set contains V. Now we'll check and compare whether the entry at the root of this tree S is larger or smaller than V. So if the entry is smaller, then V is the kind of thing that shows up in the right branch. So we recursively call set contains on s.right, forgetting about s.left because everything in s.left is smaller than entry and V is bigger. Likewise, if s.entry is larger than V, then we know if V is there at all, it's got to be in the left branch. So we recursively call set contains on the left branch with V. Okay, so here's another recursive function. We have two different base cases at the top and then two different recursive calls at the bottom. 
Let's do an example. So let's say we're looking for the number nine in this tree set. We start out with a tree that has five as an entry. This is the left and this is the right. We compare five to nine and we realize nine is bigger than five. So if nine is anywhere, it's got to be here in the right branch. We can forget about the left branch. And that means we have a lot of less work to do because we've just forgotten a whole chunk of the tree. So what's the order of growth? Well, it actually just depends. So the amount of time that it takes to search through the tree set involves traversing the tree and so is proportional to the height of the tree. Now a tree can store a lot of elements in a small height. In fact, it can store um, a binary tree can have two to the k elements in its kth layer. If we call this the zeroth layer, then there's one element. If this is the first layer, then that's two elements. And if this is the second layer, well, that's up to four elements. Though, as you see, one of them is not present here. So, if we pack the elements into the tree without leaving too many gaps, then the height of the tree only grows logarithmically with the number of elements. But we don't know that that's the case. Imagine you only have right branches, no left branches. Then you have an ordered sequence, very similar in structure to a recursive list, which means that the height is linear in the number of elements. So the order of growth uh, can't really be specified because it depends on properties of the tree. In the worst case, it's linear. And in the best case, it's logarithmic. Let's talk about adjoining to a tree set. So adjoining means returning a set that contains all the elements in the original set and also one additional element. Let's say we want to add eight to this tree set. Here's what we do schematically. We compare eight to five. And we notice that if we're going to put eight in this tree, it's got to be in the right branch because it's bigger than five. And then we're going to make a recursive call where we adjoin eight to the right branch. Now eight's smaller than nine, so if we're gonna put it anywhere, we gotta put it in the left. So the tree that remains is just seven, and seven is smaller than eight, so if we're gonna put eight in this tree, we're gonna to need to put it in the right. Now both of the branches of this tree are none. So when we recurse on the right branch, we're going to have none as the tree that we're adjoining to. That's representing the empty set. And we'll stop there and we'll put eight into that tree, meaning we'll end up with a tree that just has eight. Now we'll return this and use it as the right branch of the tree that was there before, giving us the tree seven, eight. We'll return this and use it as the left branch of the tree that we had before, replacing the old left branch. So we used to have just seven here, now we've replaced it with seven, eight. And finally, we will return this tree using it as the right branch of what we had before. So we combine the old left branch, a new right branch, and the entry at five in order to get this tree set, this binary search tree.